Breaking news from outer space Truth and fiction, same embrace Lance and Gina lead the way Decoding myths from day all right, so have you ever like really stopped to think about what now actually is? I mean, it feels so simple, right? This moment right here, right now. Yeah, it feels so obvious, doesn't it? Like yeah. we all agree on what now is. Exactly. But uh, what we've been looking into lately suggests that now is maybe not so simple after all. Right, especially when we start talking about Einstein and relativity and all that. That's exactly what this deep dive is all about, relativity and the paradox of now. We're going to get into some pretty mind-bending stuff. We are, but it's going to be fun. You've been asking some great questions about this, and luckily we've got some really interesting sources to draw from. Yeah, we've got Dr. Wagner's work and that video by Kyle Hill. There's even that mind-blowing quote by uh, Ann David Merman. Perfect. So today... We're on a mission to understand how relativity messes with our idea of a universal now, tackle the Andromeda paradox, and hopefully come out the other side with a slightly different view of time itself. I think it's safe to say we're all going to be a little more bewildered by the end of this. <laughs> bewildered, but hopefully in a good way. So to kick things off, let's talk about the reed dyke putnam argument. Okay, so the reed dyke putnam argument, it basically uses the principles of special relativity to argue for something called four-dimensionalism. Four-dimensionalism? That sounds pretty intense. Yeah, it's basically the idea that time isn't separate from space, it's actually another dimension, just like the three spatial dimensions we're used to. So instead of the universe being this three-dimensional space where things just happen over time, right. it's more like a four-dimensional block, what they call space-time, where past, present, and future all exist at the same time. Exactly. It's like a giant loaf of bread where every slice is a different moment in time. Whoa, okay, I think I'm starting to get it. So where does relativity come into all of this? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Relativity basically says that the idea of things happening simultaneously is, well, it's relative. It depends on your frame of reference. <laughs> so what you consider to be happening now isn't necessarily what someone else who's moving at a different speed would consider to be happening now. Exactly. It all comes down to each observer having their own plane of simultaneity, which is basically their own personal slice of space-time. Yeah. And it's constantly shifting depending on their motion. So even the slightest movement can change your perception of now. Even just turning your head. It's wild, right? It is. So thinking about the reed dyke putnam argument, if everyone's got their own now and their own plane of simultaneity, then everyone also has their own personal three-dimensional universe. We got it. It's like reality is branching off into infinite different versions of now all the time. In a way, yeah. And the fact that all these slightly different nows exist kind of implies that the universe isn't just this constantly changing three-dimensional thing. It supports the idea of this static four-dimensional space-time where all these different nows exist together. It's a really different way of looking at reality. Mind-blowing. So this all brings us to the Andromeda Paradox, which you mentioned before. This is where things really get crazy. Right. So the Andromeda Paradox basically shows us how weird this relativity of simultaneity can get when we start talking about cosmic distances. Imagine two people just walking past each other on the street. Okay, I'm picturing it. Now, according to relativity, if one of those people is walking towards the Andromeda galaxy and the other is walking away from it, they're now... They're, experiences of the present moment could be dramatically different, especially when we consider what might be happening in Andromeda right now. Okay, remind me, how far away is the Andromeda galaxy again? Oh, it's about 2.5 million light years away. Wow, yeah, that's a huge distance. Yeah. Okay, so you were talking about the Andromeda paradox. Didn't it have something to do with aliens? Right. Roger Penrose, a pretty brilliant physicist, came up with this thought experiment. Let's say in Andromeda, there's this alien civilization and they're debating whether or not to launch an invasion fleet toward Earth. Okay, I'm hooked. So, for the person on Earth who's walking toward Andromeda, their now in that galaxy might include the aliens still in the middle of that debate. But for the person walking away from Andromeda, their now might be days, weeks, even years into the future, a time when the aliens have already made their decision and that fleet is already on its way. Wait, so two people just walking past each other could have completely different experiences of now when it comes to what's happening millions of light years away. That just doesn't seem possible. Yeah, it feels impossible because our brains are so used to thinking about time as this universal absolute thing. But relativity tells us that it's not. 
So it's not just that they see different things happening in Andromeda, it's that their very understanding of what's happening now in that galaxy is different. Exactly. It highlights how our everyday intuition about a universal now just breaks down at these vast distances. I mean, neither of them could actually see what's happening in Andromeda right now, right? Right. It takes like 2.5 million years to reach us from Andromeda. So this paradox isn't about what they can see, it's about what they consider to be happening now based on their motion. Exactly. Like we were saying earlier, their different motions actually give them different planes of simultaneity, so their nows are tilted in different directions. It's pretty wild to think about. Okay, so I'm sure not every physicist or philosopher is on board with this idea of a subjective now. There must be some pushback. Oh, absolutely. Some really smart people have raised some pretty valid criticisms. For example, Howard Stein and Stephen Sabat argued that the present in relativity should only apply locally. Like, it works fine for events happening near us. Yeah. But trying to apply it across the entire universe, making these giant hyperplanes of simultaneity? Yeah. They argue that just doesn't make sense physically. So trying to say what's happening now in Andromeda is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Like it's not the right tool for the job. Yeah, exactly. And and David Merman, who, by the way, is known for not mincing words, put it perfectly. Okay, what did he say? He said that no inherent meaning can be assigned to the simultaneity of distant events is the single most important lesson to be learned from relativity. Wow, okay. He... He's basically saying that our everyday concept of now just doesn't apply to things that are really far away. Exactly. Okay. So how do we even make sense of this? I mean, is the Andromeda paradox actually a paradox? Or is it just a case of us misusing the concept of now? Well, Dr. Wagner in her work offers a really helpful way to think about it. She uses the example of you sitting still in a cafe and someone speeding by on a train. Right. I remember that. They would have slightly different ideas of what's happening simultaneously at different points along the train tracks. Exactly. And that highlights the key takeaway here. There is no absolute universal now that everyone agrees on. And this applies to the Andromeda paradox as well. Okay. So for someone on Earth who's basically standing still compared to the Andromeda galaxy, the aliens might not have decided whether to invade yet. But for someone moving really fast relative to us, their now in Andromeda might be at a time where the aliens have already decided, or maybe a time where they haven't even thought about it yet. Right. Their now could be in our future or our past, depending on how they are moving. So the future isn't fixed. It all depends on how fast you're going. That's crazy. It makes it feel like there are infinite possible futures. It definitely challenges our everyday intuition about time. Mm -hmm. We're so used to thinking of it as this straight line where the past is fixed, the present is happening now, and the future is yet to come. Yeah, exactly. But relativity, especially when we think about it in terms of four-dimensionalism, suggests this idea of a block universe where all moments, past, present, and future exist together. And what we perceive as now is just our particular slice of that four-dimensional reality. It all depends on our frame of reference. Exactly. So thinking back to what we were discussing before, the constant speed of light is really at the heart of all of this, right? Both Dr. Wagner and Kyle Hill talk about this in their work. Oh, absolutely. The fact that the speed of light is constant for all observers, no matter how fast they're moving, is the fundamental reason why our normal ideas about time and simultaneity break down. To keep the speed of light constant, time and space themselves have to be flexible. They have to be relative. And that leads to all these wild consequences. Right. And speaking of wild consequences, I love how Kyle Hill uses that analogy of a universal loaf of space time to help us visualize this. He even calls it totality time, although he admits that name's a bit clunky. Yeah. But that analogy really drives home the point that in this eternalist view, all moments in time are equally real. Right. It's not like time is flowing from past to future. It's more like all of time just exists. And our now is just our little slice of that giant loaf. Exactly. Okay, so let's revisit the Andromeda Paradox one more time using Kyle Hill's example of the two nerds observing Andromeda through their telescopes, one standing still, the other one moving. Perfect example. Mm -hmm. Because the moving nerd is, well, moving, their plane of simultaneity is tilted relative to the stationary nerds. So their nows in Andromeda aren't pointing at the same moment. The moving nerds now might line up with what the stationary nerd would consider to be Andromeda's past or even its future. And Kyle Hill even put some numbers on this. He said that just walking past someone on the street can create a difference of a whole day in what you consider to be the now in Andromeda. Yeah. And if you're moving close to the speed of light, 
That difference could be years, decades, even centuries. It's mind-boggling. Totally mind-boggling. It's like, while I'm sitting here having this conversation, someone walking past my window might experience a now in Andromeda where the aliens have already conquered Earth. That's the power of relativity, man. So is the takeaway here that the Andromeda paradox isn't actually a paradox? Like it's not breaking any laws of physics? You got it. The Andromeda paradox just shows us how strange the universe can be when we factor in relativity. It's not that either observer is wrong about what's happening now in Andromeda. They're both right from their own perspectives. There just isn't one single objective now for the whole universe. Especially when we're talking about those massive distances. Exactly. Okay, so to circle back to where we started, it seems like this idea of a universal now, this feeling that we all share the same present moment, is kind of an illusion. It is. It's an illusion that works really well in our everyday lives. Yeah. Because we're all moving at relatively slow speeds compared to the speed of light. But when we start talking about relativity, we see that now is actually relative. It depends on your motion. So after this deep dive, how are you feeling about now? Has your perception of it changed? It's definitely made me think, and it raises a pretty big question. If now is so personal and relative, what does that mean for cause and effect? Like if two observers can disagree about what's happening now in different galaxies, how can we say what caused what? Oh, that's a great point. And it makes me think about another big question. If our now is just one slice of this four-dimensional block of space-time, what does that say about the past and the future? Do they exist somewhere outside of our now? Whoa, those are some deep questions. I know, right? I think we've officially reached maximum mind-bending capacity for this deep dive, but it's not over. What do you say we continue this conversation offline? Sounds good to me. Awesome. And to everyone listening, be sure to join us next time when we'll be, well, you'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be fun. It always is. Thanks for listening, everyone. See you next time. Breaking news from outer space. Truth and fiction, same embrace. Lance and Gina lead the way. Decoding myths from day to day. Gaps with mystery Aliens lurking planets align False truths wrapped in cosmic signs Astrophysics, UFOs We decode what no Gaps with mystery <laughs> AG from the cosmos to your screen Every theory so unseen